Hi, this is Rob with Silicon Valley Rockstars, and I'm speaking today with Jay Daravala, founder and CEO of Yaktrack. Jay, how's it going today? It's great, Rob. I'm just happy to be here. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background as an entrepreneur and a little bit about your professional background. So I basically was born and raised in India. I uh, uh, have a background uh, in electronics, uh, in, in finance. I spent about uh, 10 years running my own network consulting company uh, based out of India and topped off my last few years in India uh, doing some investment banking for the tech sector. And then uh, migrated across to Vancouver, Canada. Uh, but my first North American uh, gig was really in Seattle. Uh, worked there for a couple of companies uh, like Microsoft, like T-Mobile. Uh, and then I moved back across to Canada to kind of close up my citizenship formalities with uh, working with TELUS for a couple of years there. And then that's, that's around the time when it, you know, the whole Yak Track idea came to me. And I stepped out uh, uh, around Feb of this year to, to, to basically chase it full time at Yak Track. Tell us a little bit about Yak Track and what your startup is all about. Thank you. So, so what we do, Rob, is, is Yak Track uh, helps video websites. Uh, to monetize their content. And we, we do this by essentially running that content through layers of uh, speech recognition, natural language processing, and then we deep analyze the, the topic metadata for topic frequency, topic relevance. We timestamp it every 30 seconds or so. And when you have this deep and rich metadata, you then use that to run queries across into ad networks uh, like Yahoo, Local.com, Ad Knowledge that we are partnered with. And, and then we bring back highly contextualized, highly targeted ads based on what the user is watching in terms of the video. So that's, that's the high level main use case or business case that we have. Are there a lot of competitors in that space? There's a couple of companies uh, that, that actually have been doing some image processing. You know, they come out of an, uh, uh, you know, some military research and, and so on, uh, you know, technology that's been licensed. There are other larger companies uh, you know, that, that also happen to have speech recognition technology, big players like, like Nuance and others. But essentially, what we have here is really what we believe is the best price performance. We've developed all of this technology in-house. Uh, we, have, we have patent pending software that, uh, that actually drives the cost of, of doing this kind of work uh, down to a point where we can make this metadata near universal and effectively uh, reinvent the video internet in the process. Jay, what kind of personal sacrifices have you had to make as an entrepreneur? Well, I mean, you know, uh, I, I kind of tend to, to distinguish between what I call the, the, the computer chip uh, entrepreneur and the potato chip entrepreneur. And, and the thing is that, you know, uh, uh, you know, in my experience, you know, I at least had an easier time, uh, you know, making money uh, sometimes in the past in a couple of potato chip businesses. But my, but my real passion, my heart always lay, you know, in the high tech stuff. That kind of field tends to be harder to make money in. And, and yet, uh, you know, that's, that's really what I was kicked about and charged up about. And that's what I wanted to do. And, and, and so, so here I am with that. And, and undoubtedly, it's, it's been a bit of a harder run uh, to actually be able to monetize innovation. Um, than to just take an existing you know, piece of technology and just simply sell it. Uh, but so that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks for sharing that. I like potato yeah. chips. Yeah. Now, <laughs> they say in Silicon Valley, failure is acceptable. Have you failed before and what have you learned from failure? Yeah, I actually, I actually have failed a couple of times in our network consulting business. We, we, we tried you know, several different things. Uh, and, and, I, and I also had uh, one other venture that I, I tried out uh, when I was up in Vancouver uh, that didn't quite work out. And I think the, the biggest you know, single thing you, you take away from things like this are, are especially when you, know, you, you get into entrepreneurship as a, as a, as a young, you know, in your 20s something, uh, is, is I think the biggest thing I've learned that in my 40s by now is, is how I relate to people. I just think that uh, you know, I'm more emotionally mature, I'm, I'm way better at relating to my customers, uh, you know, to the people I work with around me, and I think those are the single biggest lessons that I've taken away. Jay, those are some great insights. I run into a lot of entrepreneurs every day in Silicon Valley, and many of them have great ideas. Many of them have this mindset that getting funding is the end-all be-all to becoming a successful entrepreneur. What do you think of that mindset? Well, there's no doubt that, that you know, dynamic ownership models build great companies. So, so, so I think it's, an, it's, 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 it's a great evolutionary step you know, beyond the concept of just owning this private company forever or something like that as if it's your personal possession. But on the other hand, yes, I do, I do kind of take your point that it could be taken a step too far. Hey, listen, if you're 
spending all your time chasing VCs or investors. And the feedback that you're hearing from them is that we want to see some real world validation of your product, of real customers buying your product. And if you're not spending any time trying to sell your product to real customers and generate revenue, and you're just ch chasing the, the investors, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. There's a global phenomenon raging around the world. It seems like everybody wants to become an entrepreneur. Everyone thinks they can become a successful entrepreneur. What do you think of this global phenomenon? In general, I think it's great. And, and you know, I just think there, there might be, uh, you know, certain times, uh, you know, perhaps uh, of your life when uh, uh, maybe it's, it's, it's better. Uh, it's easier for me at this point. I'm an empty nester. It's just easier for me. If you're, if you're younger and you're, you don't have too many, uh, you know, commitments or responsibilities, it's probably easier. Maybe there's a time in your life when there's a lot of young children in the house and, and you know, they want your time and they need your time that maybe that may not be the best time to ju just suddenly, you know, spend 110% of your effort inside building a company. But, uh, but, in, but in general, I, you know, I, I think it's great. Jay, do you have any advice for young entrepreneurs who are starting out today? Yeah, I'd say I'd say that I'd say that uh, uh, hey, go for it, and and uh, you know my only take is that uh, I you know wouldn't it be great if every entrepreneur uh, you know apart from generating uh, returns for investors uh, you know also was passionate about the evolutionary impact of their work in addition to that. So that goes back to my, my computer chip point there again. But, but as you know, I, like, I love computer chips. So, so, so that's, uh, that's, my, that's my take. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've been speaking with Jay Daravala, founder and CEO of yaktrack.com. Jay, thanks for speaking with us today. Hey, thank you, Rob.